Today's video focuses on the signature Pokemon of gym leaders and Elite Four members that we found to be overpowered as a kid as we made our rounds through the Pokemon region. While I do know pretty much any Pokemon can be easily dismantled if you have the right Pokemon, this is a video that talks about the trouble some of us encounter thanks to these behemoths and discusses what makes these Pokemon so tough if you don't have the right tools. Some of these Pokemon may not be overpowered for traditional reasons, but I thought it'd be fun to talk about the Pokemon we were forced to battle as a kid, which led us to complain on random forums about how this Pokemon is broken, because we lost, and it should be removed from the games. Or maybe that was just me. These 10 Pokemon have definitely given us our share of frustrations upon our first encounters with them. So without further ado, welcome everyone to the Top 10 Overpowered Signature Pokemon. The video where we look at the main Pokemon of each trainer, like Red's Pikachu or Lieutenant Surge's Raichu, and talk about why they're OP. Hope you enjoy! Number 10. Chuck's Poliwrath. I'm not sure if this is a traditional Pokemon that's given many people trouble, but with the two variations of Poliwrath, the one with Dynamic Punch and Mind Reader in the original Gen 2 games, and Body Slime and Focus Punch in the remakes, it was definitely a toughie if you didn't plan accordingly. Essentially, you were going to be reduced to using a bunch of status healing moves thanks to this Poliwrath. Well, if you had any status healing items, I... I didn't because I was very stingy with my Poké Dollars. With Dynamic Punch causing confusion, Body Slam causing paralysis, and both versions having hypnosis, you were in for a bad time. They even gave the remade Poliwrath a Citrus Berry to bring in some false hope when you got him low. While Poliwrath definitely had its share of OP moments with this moveset, it was still a manageable Pokemon that would only take you by surprise once, thus giving it the spot of number 10. Number 9. Lorelei's Lapras. This defensive mythical creature, not a mythical Pokemon, just mythical as in Loctis monster, of the sea has caused me so many problems. It straight up just has Confuse Ray to make sure that you'll be confused with that 100% accuracy. Then let's throw in Body Slam again for some paralyzation. And then, once we remake this generation, let's give another Citrus Berry. Yay! Berries for everyone, I guess? Lorelei's Lapras has had its moments of being incredibly obnoxious. You get worn down and randomly frozen by Lorelei's first few Pokemon, only to have Lapras thrown in to finish you off. It was also incredibly upsetting to see her have any healing items left over for this beast. Its tanky stats and inability to know what actual damage feels like made it live on for 50 turns just gnawing away at your confused, paralyzed butt. I still shudder whenever I see it pop up in a battle. And not just because it's an ice type. Number 8. Elise is a Mulka, or Zebstrika. I feel like a Mulka is more of her signature Pokemon, but regardless, this was a frustrating one for me. Now, this is obviously not a straightforward, seriously overpowered Pokemon. It's more, if you didn't prepare and bring a ground type, you were going to get stuck in an incredibly frustrating time. This is about as frustrating as Brock's Onyx in Pokemon Yellow, or if you picked Charmander, it didn't get yourself a Mankey or Nidoran with Double Kick. Elisa's Volt Switch strategy has to be one of the most obnoxious strats to go against if you have to face it in full form without a ground type to stop it. My battle with her went something like this. All my Pokemon are down besides my Servine, and only her Zebstrika is left. That's perfectly fine. Grass resists Elec- oh. Oh, it has Flame Charge. All of her Pokemon are pretty fast, which complements the fact that you have the potential to be paralyzed at almost any given moment with things like Volt Switch, Static, and Spark at her disposal. If you were like me and plan to get a ground type from later on in the game on your team, you might want to rethink that and get one now. Like, right now. Because any gym leader that pretty much forces you to have a specific type to deal with them is gonna give you some trouble if you don't have it. Number 7. Wickstrom's Aegislash. Now, this is one of the few non-legendary, mythical, or mega Pokemon that is an uber. The other two being Greninja and Blaziken, unless that's changed after this video. So it's definitely really tough on its own. With a pretty good typing of Ghost Steel and moves like King Shield, making it invincible while lowering your stats, as well as a bunch of hard-hitting moves and its incredibly OP ability stance change, Wickstrom's Aegislash is definitely one of the most straight-up OP Pokemon to encounter. If he had a team of six, or even five actually, he'd be much tougher than he is. Also, it's just cool how fitting the Sword and Shield Pokemon is to a knight like Wickstrom. Although, it's a good thing he didn't actually grab onto it as a Hone Edge, because 
then it would drain his body. And that would not be good. Anyways, this is one of the Pokemon on this list that is both OP to deal with in-game and overpowered in actual competitive battling because of its innate strength. Even though you could just level all your Pokemon to 100 and make no one a challenge in this game, a normal playthrough would probably force you to have more than just a pen to fight this sword. You'd probably need a stylus. Number 6. Wallace's Milotic. Now, I do think Cynthia's Milotic was a bit trickier to deal with, but I don't find it to be her signature Pokemon. However, Wallace? Wallace was still no slouch. With an ability like Marvel Scale, and having a move like Recover, and a Citrus Berry, because why not? It took quite a few turns to take down this tanky sea snake if you were even able to take it down. This was probably one of the hardest Pokemon to one-shot, seeing as nothing is four times effective against it, and as I said, it had some rather tanky stats. So coupling that with its recovery move and strong sense of personal self-worth, and the fact that it can confuse you with Water Pulse, Milotic proved to be quite the challenger, no matter the moveset or who its trainer was. Number 5. Norman Slacking Even though Slacking has an ability like Truant to hinder its power, it still proved to be a problem in battles. Also, hey, let's not even wait to give it a Citrus Berry in the remakes. Let's just give it to Slacking and Emerald. That happened, even though it is a weaker berry in Gen 3. Slacking has a multitude of obnoxious moves. Norman also has two of them on the same team in Ruby and Sapphire, one of which has Yawn, and the other has Faint Attack to render your ghost types useless. In Pokemon Emerald, Norman's Slacking has Counter, so if you thought you were going to just kick this guy out with a fighting type move, you could potentially lose your counter to a counter, and have to fight against this monster who can put you to sleep, still has faint attack, has a crazy amount of physical attack, resists ghost moves, and even just has a move like Facade that will have a base power of 210 if inflicted by a status move, thanks to Stab, although its attack still gets halved by Burn. He even has Slack Off to get some health back. Like, great job! You were lazy last turn, and now you're gonna Slack Off and still ruin my day. Okay. I feel like your dad beating you with slacking is some incredible amount of irony, as he beats you with a lazy Pokemon that slacks off, showing you not to procrastinate on your homework anymore. Ain't that right, Brandon, who was supposed to hand in an essay three weeks ago? Number 4. Claire's Kingdra Welcome back to another round of Let's Put a Citrus Berry on this Pokemon in the remake. Our 48th contestant is Kingdra. You know... That water dragon type that was already a pain to deal with and was only weak to dragon until the 6th generation when fairy was introduced. But there weren't any fairies for Claire! Kingdra would do that thing where it would smokescreen you a bunch, make you miss a bunch, and then wear you down with surf, hyper beam, and then, well, dragon breath. The move that was just as likely to paralyze you as a body slam. So pretty much 100% if you were me. I feel like Generation 2 had some of the most obnoxious status-inflicting strategies for their gym leaders. And honestly, I'm okay with that, because it made it a lot more challenging and more fun to battle against. But boy oh boy was Kingdra the king of obnoxious, accuracy-dropping, paralyzed struggles. Number 3. Lance's Dragonite. He had three of them. Three! All of which had something that was probably super effective against your team. In every game, he was incredibly tough. In Pokemon Yellow, his Dragonite had Thunder, Fire Blast, Blizzard, and Hyper Beam, all of which had 100% accuracy if you were me. Now, I know they're supposed to have 70 and 85 accuracy, but pretty sure it was actually 100. Lance's Dragonite was also a whopping level 62, and while it might have been four times weak to ice, it could definitely tank at least one hit from your equally leveled Pokemon, or just outspeed and kill it with one of its elemental moves. I'm not actually entirely sure which version I would pick to be the most overpowered version of this guy. Dragonite is definitely powerful on its own, jumping into the OU category along with Kingdra in Generation 4, but every version of Lance's Dragonite had something new for you to deal with. Like a time traveler that knows your history, Dragonite would do its best to make you realize how OP it could be. Number 2. Whitney's Milk Tank Obviously, if you have a fighting type or level 100 Pokemon, Whitney would probably still beat you. But hey, who knows? Maybe you'll get lucky. The way I look at what makes an OP Pokemon during a regular playthrough is the fact that if you put them in a sort of even battle, how would the gym leader strategy fare? In this case, very, very well. Milk Tank probably has one of the most obnoxious movesets to encounter. You have its already high health and defense, which is complemented very nicely by Milk Drink, 
then you have Attract, a status move that never goes away unless you switch, and then you have Rollout, a move that gets more powerful every turn it's used in succession, which again, complements the fact that she can make you fall in love with her. I don't know how though, because I don't see how I can be attracted to this thing. And finally, just a decent stab move for Milk Tank in Stomp. But what really makes Whitney powerful are the memes. There are countless memes of Whitney destroying teams and causing lots of trouble for young trainers. So if we can all come together and meme about it, then you know it's been branded as one of the toughest battles in Pokemon. Number 1. Cynthia's Garchomp This is another incredibly powerful OU Dragon that is very well rounded on a very, very solid team. Having a type like Ground on a Dragon that has high attack and earthquake, a move that counters an insane amount of types, means it might take you down. Quite a few times. Garchomp is 4 times weak to ice, but in Diamond and Pearl, her Garchomp had Brick Break, and the speed and attack to take care of your ice types. That were in Frost Loss, I guess. And another Citrus Berry! Stop! Stop with all the Citrus Berries! I can't handle the Citrus Berries! And the potions! And the strength! It's... It's just too much! It's overpowering me! And that's why it's on this list. The big thing about Garchomp is not only the fact that it's just a powerful Pokemon on its own, and has quite a nice moveset for type coverage, what really makes it OP is the fact that Cynthia's team is a pretty competitive and excellent team, that if you get stuck having to deal with Garchomp last, it has the ability to just sweep through your entire team and just murk you. I've been in so many positions where I've been worn down by her Pokemon, and once I get near the end, thinking the championship is finally mine, Garchomp comes in, outspeeding and thrashing at full force, taking down my last remaining Pokemon before I can heal. Thanks everyone so much for watching, I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more. I thought this would be a fun throwback topic to when we were kids and thought these guys were actually OP. I mean, some of them are. But that feeling of accomplishment after beating a Pokemon that was incredibly tough were some of my favorite moments as a kid, and I hope you enjoyed those as well. Thank you again for tuning in, and until next time, keep on catching!